Give me your tired, your poor, your hollowed masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shores. Send these, the homeless, and tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. This quote is engraved on the Statue of Liberty as a welcoming of immigrants coming to America. America is said to be the greatest country in the world, a claim both native and abroad. So great to have a reputation of such esteem. And yet, today in this country, there is a conversation that parents must have with all children of color. This talk is one of preservation, but more importantly, a request to come home safely. Because it's the only thing we can do in a society where those who are supposed to protect us are not meant to see us as a threat, perceive us as something dangerous. Meaning that the earlier quote that I just mentioned is pretty inaccurate. Hello, my name is Nathan Bongo, and my topic is bettering police interaction with members of the community. My thesis, given the recently recognized events regarding police brutality, emphasizing training selection and de-escalation tactics are crucial for rectifying a long history of rash, violent impulses by those who are by law instructed to protect and serve. So, the early version of modern police work was invented in Britain, actually. It was invented in like, early Britain. And it, was, it went by a completely different name, the hue and cry process. That's where we derived our neighborhood watch. It was like volunteers of the community would police the community. That's where neighborhood watch was derived from. Later, it was changed to pose comitas. In Latin, that means power or force of a country. That's when the sheriff was accompanied by other law enforcement to assist him in protecting the peace of a community and arresting felons of that sort. This is where we got the big stick which was adopted in the American culture. That's when it was a paid profession. So what we can get from this history is that the early mission of the police department was always to keep the peace. Keeping the peace is still the mission of the police department. So I want to know how they've been doing so far. Well, to the left of the screen, you can see Rodney King. And on, in, in March 1991, California, 12.53 AM, he was seen beaten by like five or six police officers on the side of the road. And almost two decades afterwards, Terrence Crusher was killed on the road when his vehicle was parked to the side. And he even went so far as to be called a bad looking dude by one of the police at the scene. To me, that seems like a failure of keeping the peace because the loss of one life is a detriment to the society who lost the life. No matter if it's one life or a hundred lives, the loss of either one can be effective to the lives of the person who lost this person, as far as this is, and the society who lost this person as well. So if they had just communicated with him, this might not have happened. So you have to think, the training should be changed. Communication is the key. So the training should involve more communication. But then how are these people trained then? If we're talking about switching the training up, how are these people trained who protect us? Well, the training goes like this. First, for selection into the police academy, you must complete a 120 question exam in which they test your aptitude for the job. Then, on the training, you are exposed to everything on your utility belt, like mace, cuffs, a baton, you are tased, you're thrown in the back of a cop car. You're, you're subjected to everything that you subject others to when you arrest them. So you can understand it. Maybe that's going to sway you from using it too much that's up to your discretion. And afterwards, there's a self-assessment portion of the exam in which you ride around with a senior officer. That way you can further test if you're ready for the job. Seeing many things on call, from the bloodiest murder scene to the most trivial theft crime there could be. All this is to measure. And in 2016, they also took a training course where they went up to some kind of unified training center and work more on communication and training. So this tells me that they're taking our thoughts into consideration. But it's not enough because this year somebody else was killed. So further communication training is, is also needed. Communication training can help build rapport. And rapport is the presence of camaraderie. This way, there will not be any further incidents. Rapport can also lead to de-escalation because that's what we see in the news. The escalation training is needed. 
What is de-escalation? Well, de-escalation is defined as to reduce the level of intensity within a situation. The way to do that is, again, report. See the picture. This phase goes through many stages, from anger back to joy. This could be several days. It could be any number of time, or like a period of time. It doesn't matter what it is from 10 minutes to 10 days, but this is a proper example of de-escalation. Servants of the community must be master communicators. And every incident in the news happens from an unfamiliarity between law enforcement and the people that they are enforcing the law with. So good communication can dissolve any situation before it even happens, meaning that communicating with us is a good way to build our trust and keep us off their backs. That way they can do our job and we can feel safe letting them do their job. A good example of this is when I went on a ride along with an officer by the name of Officer Madanada. So he was a good communicator indeed. And he really made people feel like they could trust him. Not just me in the car, but people outside of the car who met him for the brief moment of a minute or two, or even a second. It didn't matter. I learned a lot of things about this job while sitting in his car. One of the things is that, well, the schedule for policing is very flexible. You don't really have to do much, and yet you can do many things just by doing nothing. Sitting in a parking lot, you are deterring crime because you're in a police car. So somebody who's trying to do something stupid might think twice because you're standing right there, or you're sitting right there, or you're parked right there. Also, there are no ticket quotas, you know contrary to popular belief, so they don't have to write you any ticket. They can literally pull up and give you a verbal warning. Which leads me to the third thing. Compliance is the difference between a ticket and a trip downtown. Just like they can give you a verbal warning, they can also take you downtown if you're obnoxious. Or you know, you say too much, you talk back and all this stuff. So you could receive a trip to, to the city hall, or the precinct, whatever they take, because you decided you wanted to run your mouth too much. Now this is cool if somebody's trying to do the job right, but also it could be dangerous if somebody already wanted to arrest you and then they start something and you respond just slightly and now you're in the back of the car. So you should really know the rights that you have or if you have any in this circumstance so that you don't get, you don't get caught up in that. Also, license plate checking is completely up to you. So you don't have to be suspicious of anybody to check a license plate. You can just key it in, you check it if it was that if it was their unlucky day, it was their unlucky day. That's just what it is. But the most important thing I learned from them is rapport building helps. To have somebody be able to trust you goes a long way because that ensures that their safety is left up to you. They give it to you willingly. So let us reflect. What have we learned here? We learned the training of a police. We learned the schedule of police. We learn the responsibilities they have and the early mission of the police department. And I believe that to keep police action in line for all of us and also uphold the early mission that they had before, we should prioritize communication training above all. Because if you have camaraderie, you're not going to hurt somebody you know. You don't hurt your friends. So you wouldn't hurt somebody that you have good rapport with. And that's the only way for us to better relations. Thank you and what questions do you have? consider being a police officer and helping the community and changing the views of how they're looked at? Uh, yeah, it's not a bad profession at all. I would, I would definitely do it, but that's because I'm a man of action myself. So it's like, I would do that because it's really not, like the job title is just the job title. It's the people behind the title that are really doing stuff. Because like, I met two police officers. And while one was communicating, the other one was kind of laid back. So if I was a police officer, I'd definitely display the proper way to do it. So yeah, I, I, I consider doing that. But I mean, it's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it. But I consider it. Nathan, what advice would you have for a senior just starting this phase of the senior exit project? This, this service part? Preparing their presentation, their service, their product. 
uh, it's not that hard, but you might have to like, you just gotta, uh, I don't know, don't be afraid to get in front of people. It's really not that bad. I just did it, I did it like three times. It's not that hard. All you gotta do is prepare, you just practice, really. And you gotta know what you're gonna say, like, you have to see your slides in your head. So like, even when you don't have it, or like, if you don't have a computer at home, you can like say it, and just imagine the slide is behind you. And then you won't really need to look at it as much.